three game sweep of the Phillies. Everybody's feeling good these days. It's been a wild season. May 9th, Dontrell Willis called up. Two months later, he was an all star. May 22nd, they fired Jeff Torborg. Jack McKean was too old to manage at 72, right? Wrong. He's gone 73 and 48. Everybody thought they were done when Mike Lowell got hurt. Jeff Conine has been sensational. And September 25th, they won them all when they had to. They swept the Phils. Top first on Friday, Joe McEwing up there for the Mets. Of Carl Pavano. Short fly to center. Juan Pierre sticks the landing. Earlier in the game, Pierre stole his 63rd base. Bottom five, Derek Lee. To left. They're going to wave Pierre. We know he's speedy. 3-1 Florida. And everybody in Miami can feel that playoff fever. Bottom six, Konai. Solo home run is third in five games. 20th home run of the year, his fifth as a Marlin. 4-1 Florida. Top eight, they're on the corners. Tony Clark. Uh-oh, off Chad Fox. Juan Encarnacion. Next batter, Fox settles down, facing Timo Perez. Marlins tough at home, where they've now won 15 of their last 17. Oogie on to close in the ninth, gets Jason Phillips. One out away from the postseason. It's up to Roger Cedeno. Trader Jack looking on. Oogie, six save and eight chances. Pierre is under it. And the Marlins are your National League wild card winners for 2003. They win this one 4-3. They are in their first playoff appearance since they won the World Series in 1997. And I just told them that if they wanted to work hard and they want to put their, put their mind to this game, dedicate themselves, that we could be playing in October. And they all hop the board and there we are. This is just a great feeling, you know what I mean? Because everybody wrote us off and didn't believe in us, but in the clubhouse, we, we continue to believe in ourselves, and it's just a good testament of the team. So we spend a lot of time together, uh, more than we do our family. So, you know, we're just, uh, it's, it's almost like you want to cry tears of, of joy, you know? It's just, uh, I'm so happy for all the guys that have never been here, myself included. Playoffs and hosting the Dodgers Friday. Bottom three. This is Ray Durham with the bases loaded to left center. Dave Roberts. Newton bounces back in. That's a three run triple. Makes it six nothing. Giants as Kazushi is tagged for seven runs on eight hits and four. Let's take another look and watch the fan who clearly interferes with the baseball. And then watch this guy, the Giants mascot. The all. All the humanity. The heartbreaking sorrow of the play. Durham robbed of a grand slam. Makes me sad. It does, yeah. Bumps me up. Bottom four, Barry Bonds. Here we go. Mm. Solo home run is 45th. He was three for four. Career home run number 658. He is two home runs shy of tying his godfather, Willie Mays, for third all time at 660. And this guy is risking his life for the souvenir. I've always said, John, you can't put your life on eBay. All set. Thank you. Giants win 10 1. I've never actually said that. Not only is Bonds two behind Willie Mays' all time mark, but he's now tied for the NL home run lead with Jim Tomey and Richie Sexton. If Bonds manages to hold on to that lead, he'll be the oldest player to lead his league in home runs since Cy Williams in 1927. So, how did the Braves do in Philly? There's Schmitty throwing out the first ball. Final series at the vet. It's great. Top of six. Marcus Giles hitting 291 at home, 347 on the road. Forget about that home field advantage. Don't want it. 21st of the year for Giles. Hey, how about Steve Carlton? Helps the countdown. Uh, close your eyes, kids. Oh, is he naked? The fanatic is naked. How can you tell? Nude. Top of seven, one nothing Braves. And Pablo Javi Lopez, what a year. 325, right on. 42 homers, 108 RBIs. Braves win. They win 100 games as well, fifth time in seven years. So, will the Braves game up on the Giants for home field in the NL with two to play? Braves still in Philly with Mike Hempton on Saturday. The Giants, once again, hosting the Dodgers. Astros began the day, even with the Cubs in the NL Central. First pitch of the game, Scotty Pesednik, and uh, the first of four Houston errors. Scotty Poe safe at first. Jeremy Robertson made the error, and then his accuracy aired. And it's not a bad idea to walk Richie Sexton these days, but he does it on four straight pitches. Bert Hooten pitched 2,652 big league innings, only walked 799. He had great control, so should have very good advice. It didn't translate to Jeremy. To Mark Smith, four in a row. Second straight four-pitch walk. All outside, Bill Hall scores. One-nothing Brewers, and 
Jimmy Williams and his implausibly straight visor. He's got the biggest hat in baseball. Concerned. Meanwhile, Wes Helms. Brady Clark scores, and Jaime has seen enough. That's with 1M. Here he comes. Robertson pulled after just a third of an inning. 18 pitches, just seven for strikes. Top of two, 5-1 Brewers. Sarlus in facing Royce Clayton. Makes a great effort here. Throw gets away, and then there's no one at home. Two score. Brewers lead 7-1. Top of seven. Richie Sexton has already homered once, and holy shnikey, look where this one lands. What Chris Collingwood is to Fountains of Wayne, Richie Sexton is to the Brewers. 45th homer, ties the team record he had 45 two years ago. Meanwhile, rain wiped out the Cubs and Pirates, which means doubleheader in Ridley on Saturday. Bobby Valentine, what does that mean for the Cubs' playoff hopes? Tomorrow there'll be two. It's going to be Pryor in the first game, Clement in the second game. you got to play a veteran squad, and you're probably going to play the veteran squad in both games. This really does affect the race, and it could be adverse to the Cubs. Even though they could come out and just let it all hang out, win two. You saw it's been done 19 times this year out of 25 doubleheaders, so the odds are with them that they could do it. They've already lost two doubleheaders this season. And you wonder, psychologically, they'll be feeling good knowing when they wake up, They'll have a half game lead already on Moss thin playoff hopes at Arizona. Mark Grace announcing his retirement Friday, effective Sunday. Standing O from everybody. Top 5 2 2 Albert Pujols. That is foul. Almost a home run. Next pitch. This is not nearly a home run. The 5 4 force to uh, end the inning. Top 9 7 6 D backs. Base is empty. Pujols facing Matt Manti. Matt Manti has been money down the stretch. Cardinals lose 7-6. They are officially done. Mark Grace be a good TV guy, right? Oh, sure. Get him in here. I bet it'll be. Make a call. Bring him in. Mike Sosha's Angels, 5-10, and 10, last 15 games. Rafael Palmero in the house. Rafael Palmero out of the house. Career homer, 5-28. 38 this year. 1-0 Rangers. Bottom 8, 3-3. Sean Figgins at the plate. Sends it to left. Jermaine Clark. Clark going back. Oh, it's a great catch. It's a long way to go. He to get really, they did run a long way. Three batters later. The pitch. Love the salmon. Here comes Garrett Anderson. Angels go on to win. K-Rod with Percival out. Got the save. Follow a four home run night. Carlos Delgado ready to show us. Blue Jays hosting Cleveland. He was on ESPN News Friday. Before the game, I was feeling pretty bad. I still got a little bit of a call. I'm taking medication, and I have to go take a nap like at 6, six in the afternoon. So when I woke up, I said, you know what? Let's go do this, try to have a, a decent day. And the next thing you know, I went out, had a good day, and you just can't predict what's going to happen in a, in a baseball field. The pitch to it. Good tip for you kids at home before the big Little League game, NyQuil. Bottom one, five homers and five at-bats. What do you think? Nine. Not so much. And a nap. Yeah, and a nap. Get the nap. Yeah, that's important, too. Bottom eight, Delgado 0 for 3. And here we go in the air right to Johnny Peralta. Delgado 0 for 4. Blue Jays lose 2-1. Hayes Mariners, chest painter. <laughs> I hope he waxed. Does support the team. <laughs> Bottom second, tied to two. Ichiro. Stoink above the U in Starbucks. 60th RBI. Ray Sanchez scores. M's up 3-2. Ace can't lose, or there's no way they can get home field advantage throughout the American League playoffs. Scott Hatterberg deep to right. I love Ichiro. Don't tell me he did it. He did it. So no home field advantage for Ken Maka and the A's. They lose. Yankee. Night against the Orioles in the Bronx. Top four against Luis Matos. And Larry Bigby. And guess what? Jorge De Paula is perfect through four. Top five, still perfect. BJ. Deep to right, and Ruben Sierra is at the wall. That's not always a good thing, but in this case, it works out. Nice job. De Paula still with a perfecto. No perfecto in the seventh. The no hitter still going until Bigby knocks this one over to Paula's glove, and there goes the no hitter. Last pitcher to throw a no hitter in his first career start, Bobo Holloman of the 1953 St. Louis Browns. He almost had that one. DePaula allowed just the one hit in six and a third, walked one, struck out six, and left to a standing up. Bottom 10, it's 3-2 Baltimore. Yankees threatening, runners on the corners. Bernie Williams. Jorge Julio gets him his 36th save, a career high. Yanks still haven't clinched home field. O's win 3-2 and 10.
earlier, game one, Andy Pettit going for his 21st win. And he's owned the Orioles this year. Owns. Top of the first, no score against Larry Bigby. What a great name, that is Bigby. 89 pitches, 66 strikes for Pettit. Meanwhile, Alfonso Soriano, 23 homers on the road, 14 in the stadium, 37 overall. All right, same inning, Jorge Posada, three-run homer. 30th homer on the year for Posada, the Yankee catcher. That ties Yogi Berra for most home runs by a Yankee catcher in one season. He'll have a weekend to break it. Six nothing bombers. Pettit again. Now 21 and 8 on the year. Same record he had in 96. 21 wins despite a higher ERA than Mussina or Clemens. Yankees sweep. Red Sox in Tampa, Pedro's final tune-up for the postseason. Top one for the Red Sox, Manny Ramirez. Manny Ramirez hitting three. Say hello to our little fry. 37, two-nothing Red Sox. Manny in a race for the batting title with his teammate Bill Miller, who got the night off. Miller leading the AL, 327. Top three, it's Manny up again with the bases full. Three. And he won for two, so he's hitting 325. He's two back at Bill Miller for the batting time. Bottom three, Jared Sandberg facing Pedro, and exactly. Pedro, three scoreless innings. Struck out two. He'll start Wednesday at Oakland. Red Sox. Tigers need to win two out of three against the Twins to avoid the 62 Mets record of 120 losses. 3-3 three, three in the 10th. This is Lou Ford. And Lou Ford doubles to left center. They're going to wave Justin Morneau from first. And the Twins have a 4-3 lead. Bottom 10 every day, Eddie. Andres Torres steals third. All those Tigers, they're being aggressive. That's what they do. Shane Halter's up there. And Halter, as the Tigers manufacture runs, they don't want that 120 loss deal hanging on them. Ties it at four. Every day, Eddie blows the save but ends up with a win when Michael Kadire homers off Franklin Herman in the 11th, his fourth of the year. And the Twins win 5-4. So Detroit now with 119 losses. They are one shot tying the 62 Mets for the all-time mark. So they need to win only one of their two remaining games against the Twins this weekend to avoid becoming the all-time record holders. Alan Trammell says, I don't want it to happen, but I don't know what else I can do. White Sox and Royals came in with identical records, second place on the line in the AL Central, and That's Carlos great. Beltran becomes the sixth player since 1900 to have 100 runs scored, 100 RBIs, and 30 stolen bases in three seasons. The other four are Hall of Famers and also Barry Bonds. But Jose Valentin. Grand slam! Career grand slam number seven for him. White Sox win 11-2 win at this point. Taking on the Expos. Back in 1978, Pete Rose gave away nine Jeeps. Barry Larkin did it again. He told me uh, he was here for uh, 18 years of never saying no. Lost my keys. Buckle me. Two outs in the first. That was uh, clubhouse attendant Rick Stowe. Barry Larkin gave him a new Mercedes. Nice. Probably about as good as nine Jeeps, really. Brad Wilkerson, 19th home run Expos, win 5-1. Right, Rockies pod, Xavier Nady, who is on second as we take a look at the chicken. Love the chicken. There he is. Strange play here in the bottom of the third. Bases loaded one out. And this is ruled a trap. So Jay Payton throws the ball in. That run will count. There's a force out there at second base. So now there's two outs. Then, for some reason, leaving the base is Xavier Nady. He's out. There's three outs. The inning's actually over. No one seems to realize, including the umpires, Gary Matthews Jr., you're already out. Strange play. Looks like chicken. Padres still win. Five nothing.